Honestly, I'm a mess without Brianna home. Bree's gone overnight. She's taking the girls away for just a little bit of girl time. I'm stuck doing all the morning chores and I just want to tell you now, Bree is the master at maintenance on our place and she's just the expert on the morning chores. So it's not that I can't do them, but I honestly am gonna probably fumble and take twice as long as she normally takes. Now granted, Grace, does quite a few of them and Joyful as well, so I'm doing all three of their chores in the morning. I'm just checking on the goats for starters, and honestly, they're looking a little empty. They've been out for a long time now, and their bellies don't look full, so I may need to actually move them to a new fence. And you can tell they want to come out of here because they're not up there happily eating, they're down here standing here waiting for me to do something. Though on the bright side, they're in the fence, and, and that's really good. I'm not gonna let them out yet. I'm gonna let them out this afternoon, but I'll give them a couple hours out. I'm gonna feed them a little bit, even though we mostly feed them in the evening, because we want them to be hungry, so they come in for their supper, so they don't become the supper of something else that's hungry after dark. Now I've gotta feed these pullets without, without them escaping because they're really hard to catch and they like to jump out of here, and they're big enough they can just jump right out. They're already trying. I get back in there. Get them water while they're busy eating. Hopefully, I won't lose any. And wow, they make a mess of those overnight. Watch those out. You really got to scrub the insides of these waters because they just get this bacterial scum in there, and that can't be good for your chicks to drink any volume of that. All right, we'll fill it up now. They're thirsty, so they're not jumping out. It's nice to hear their sounds go from kind of semi-desperate to happy and satisfied when you give them their food and water every morning. When you get to know your animals, you can tell from a distance, just from their sound, what's going on or that something's wrong and you need to investigate, whether it's the chicks or the goats or the cow. Speaking of the cow, I need to check the cow because she could have a calf anytime. Let's check on these broody hens in here. If you watched yesterday's video, you'll know they're in here because we're trying to break them of their broodiness. And I'm looking for eggs right now. There shouldn't be any. You can just hear from their sounds they're still broody. They don't have any eggs. They usually stop when they go broody and are trying to sit on eggs. And they've got food and water, so we're gonna leave them alone. It's quite an entourage coming out here to do this job, we're moving the cow. It's time for her to go to a new section of grass. Come on, let's go, stick with me. Daddy, it just got harder because he wants to be carried because he gets worried the geese are gonna bite him, which they might, but he's... They might. I, I keep him away when we're out here. Look at that cow. Look at that cow. We're past the geese, I'm gonna set you down and you're gonna walk with me. Dad, don't get me. No one's gonna get you. I keep you safe. I won't let the geese get you. All right, you boys play at the creek. Don't get too wet. Okay. Have fun. The cow's grazing up there right now. She grazed this area last, and then this area before that. All right, here's where the cow's at now. She's up here laying in the grass, and I want to check her to see how her ligaments look, see how soon we might be having a baby. Get up. Look at that udder. It's starting to fill it's just slow it's real slow what we're looking at right here is for this to sink down right here and it's still she's still got a couple days to go at least I used to think moving your cow every day was just crazy and we've not moved her every day but I'm really enjoying rotating her and actually watching it have an almost immediate impact on how well the pasture grows here's her next section to graze it's been a full 30 days since she's been on here. And I know she's gonna love it and get a lot out of it. Plus, I don't feel bad because I'm screwing up the pasture as I go, so it's it's just really fun.
Alright, I've just got one more section I need, so you hold that right there, okay? You gotta pull it, dude. If, if that gets in a crazy big tangle, guess who's gonna have to untangle it? Me. Just go through everyone and go up the hill. If you want to put a loop in some poly wire or actually any string, a loop like this, but don't want to get a knot stuck in it, you can tie your loop around a stick and it will make it so that it never gets too tight. Just like that. One more job, I got a weedied. The section she just came off of, man, her udder looks so full. It's coming any day now. I'm excited and, I mean, I hate to say it, I'm excited and nervous. Anything could go wrong. We've never had to pull a calf before. I suppose we could if we had to. We just have a lot of invested in it going well, so hopefully I can do this in 20 minutes. All right, that's done. How long did that take? Less than 20 minutes, about 16 minutes. Guys, we're just knocking off the seed heads to stimulate this grass to grow, but we're also removing other seeds, or I mean seed heads, quote unquote. Here's an example of these nasty weeds, Carolina horse nettle. Cows won't eat it. I'm sure horses don't like it. It probably is poisonous for them. It's in the nightshade family. The bane of graziers, is that a word? Uh, in the area, and it's really prickly and nasty. And what we're doing is not killing it, but we are knocking the tops off of the plants, essentially preventing them from making any fruit, in turn, preventing them from making seed, in turn, limiting their spread, and then also just as we knock off the tops of the plants, we're suppressing their growth. Hey, thanks for being so patient, guys. This is broken. Oh, I know. He pushed me down, but he said sorry. Okay, good. Did y'all play at the creek and have fun? Yeah. Good, let's go back. I honestly am kind of a mess without Brianna here, and I think that speaks to our partnership. When you work with someone as a team, and then one team member is gone, it just makes things really hard. And so when she's gone, I miss her in more ways than one. I do miss her being here, her as a person, because I like her. I also miss the work that she does, how she organizes things. She helps keep me on track. So I'll be happy when she gets home uh, later this evening. I hope she'll be happy to be home too. She's, I know she's been having a great time with Miss Grace. Oh my goodness, what did y'all catch? Oh my goodness. And we have another one and now we I caught another And look at that little one. That's enormous. And we got that other little one. Is that the biggest live one you've ever caught? Yeah. I'm trying to get it, it to not high. escape. Well, be, it, I don't think it can really get out. Maybe it, it can. Yeah, Dad, the back was right here and the front was down there. Let's watch. So That's big. Back. What do you think, Wilder? Uh, right now. He's mm -hmm. big, isn't he? He's big. This is what kind of dad I am. Look at, look at this guy's face. Peanut butter face. He, he was eating peanut butter for a snack and then ran down here to catch crawdads. What kind of dad does that make me? I don't know. I will wash it off though. He won't, he won't wear that all day. Okay gentlemen, if you're gonna cook it, you better bring it up. Let's go ahead and cook it. Okay. I told them they could cook that crawdad and eat it with their supper. And we're gonna eat it. Under the boiling water. Yeah, you can put pepper in if you want to. I don't know how much it's going to flavor it. We don't have any crawfish boil. Now a bunch of you folks from Louisiana and other parts close by are going to tell us how to cook crawfish. And I want to hear it because someday I want to end up down there and go to a big crawfish boil. But that's not coming soon, but later on maybe. It smells so good. It does smell good. Spicy. The dinner is served. Ooh, yum. All right, yum. dig in. Here, can I show you? Yeah. So, tail, this is meat here. 
Yum. <laughs> Eat some. Mmm. Eat all that meat off there. Whoa. The white part there. Can I eat the white part? Yeah. Mmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Is it good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Phil, what? You got the first. Oh. Mm -hmm. How did that taste, Wilder? Uh, good. Bulldog. Bulldog? Yeah. Okay. Justice, how did that taste? Really good. Really? You like it? Did you eat 10 or 15 of them? More. Right, did you enjoy that? Mm-hmm. How does it make you feel to eat your car out from the creek? Good. good. I think if they ate it, honestly, it was a success. So that's what I'm gonna call it. The boys are in bed. They're sleeping. I put them to bed on time. And I am whooped. Brianna is gonna get home with the girls probably in the next two hours, about a little after dark. And before then I need to do the evening animal chores and clean up in the camper. Are the boys sleeping? The boys are sleeping. Welcome home. Hi. Have you done your chores? I was just getting started on it, so you can help. <laughs> They're excited because, well, I said if the boys are asleep and Daddy already did the chores, I would watch one show with them. Daddy said he started on the chores, so you can help them. Are the boys asleep? Yep. We can watch Good the show. Job. <laughs> it's so nice to be home. All right, guys, the girls are helping out with the chores. That's really nice. And I'm going to shut this video down so I can go inside and clean up because I didn't have it done before Brie got home and I like to always do that. So we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Or maybe not tomorrow, but quite soon.